In this video, we're going to do some practice Pythagorean theorem problems dealing with missing side lengths in right triangles. So here in the first one, what do we know? Well, we know it's a right triangle because we see this little label right here, which means 90 degrees. So we have a right triangle, and one side is 3, the other side is 4, and the missing side across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem. Again, it tells us that a squared, one leg squared, get that, and then add it to another leg squared, equals the hypotenuse squared. And our goal is always to find what c is, so eventually we'll take the square root of c squared, and that will give us c. So that's, that's going to be our approach almost in all of these problems, I think. Well, let's see what happens. So in this first one here, uh, let's say this equals a and this equals b, we want to find c. So a squared, our first leg squared, is 9. 3 squared is 9. Our second leg squared is 4 squared, or 16. Add them together, we get 25. And that's what c squared equals. We take the square root of that, and that will tell us what c is. So c equals the square root of 25, and that's 5. So again, c refers to this length right here, and c squared refers to a square that you can draw off of this, right, with a length that's equal to the side of c. So we know that c equals the question mark, it's the hypotenuse, and it equals 5. And we can apply that in our next triangle here because, again, we see it's a right triangle. And you can only use this theorem in right triangles. But anyway, now a is 3 and b is 8. So a squared is 9 and b squared is 64. Add these two up, what do we get? Well, 9 plus 64 is 73. And this time, c equals the square root of 73, and that's a decimal, right? How do we know that? Well, because 8 squared is 64, that's too small. 9 squared is 81, that's too large. And c, the square root of 73, is between these two. So the length of the hypotenuse now is between 8 and 9 units, or, or whatever we're looking at. But we could just leave it as the square root of 73. Knowing that, what do we do in this last triangle? This is a fun one. So even though this last one is poorly drawn, and I'm, I'm sorry about that, um, we see that it's labeled as having two right triangles. So even though it doesn't look like a right triangle here with this, this altitude tilted, we can assume this is just a badly drawn diagram of one, two right triangles. So let me just clear the screen off. And then I'll put that back up here. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, it depends, and, and it really depends how I want to approach this. In both problems, excuse me, in both triangles, let's call this triangle one over here, and in triangle two, the red triangle right here, they both have the same leg, that small leg of four. But both of them were given a hypotenuse. And this is actually bad. Let me do this over. OK. What I'm saying is, in this case, it's, it's unlike the others, because in the Pythagorean theorem, before we were given these two legs, and now we're not. What are we given? Well, in this triangle right here, it's a, it, it has a leg of 4 for a, so 4 squared. And then the other leg is unknown. So that's x squared, but we're given the hypotenuse of 7, so we know the hypotenuse squared is, is equal to 7 squared. Okay, and the same thing is true in this other triangle. Let's just label it as a red triangle. Use my line tool, which I should have used before. Okay, here again, we're given one leg of 4, and then a mystery leg here of y, so again, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. For the red triangle, we have 4 squared for a. b squared is unknown. We're calling it y squared. But c squared, we do know, is going to be 21 squared. So in both of these, now it's a leg that we're trying to find, not the hypotenuse. That's OK, though. It just requires one extra step. Let's look at that right here. So 4 squared is 16. x squared, we don't know what it is yet, so it's going to be x squared. 7 squared is 49. So now x squared plus 16 gives you 49. In other words, something unknown plus 16 is 49. 
So what do we do? Well, I'm going to use inverse operations and say that if that's true, if I can add something to 16 to get 49, then I can subtract 16 from 49 to get that missing something. So x squared here is equal to what? Well, 49 minus 16 is equal to 33. Right? 49 minus 10 is 39, minus 6 more is 33. And then x squared is equal to 33, so x is equal to the square root of 33. And just like before, it's going to be a decimal. It's going to be between 6 squared, which is, which is 30. 33 is between 6 squared, which is 36, and 5 squared, which is 25. So the root of 33 is between 6 and 5. We don't know exactly what it is. So we can leave it as the square root of 33. So what about y? Well, let's use the same procedure. We just have larger numbers. 4 squared is 16. y squared is unknown. And 21 squared, we'll just do that up here, 21 times 21. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Carry the 0 because now it's really 20 times 1, which is 20. And 20 times 20, which is 400 but you can think of it as 2 times 2, being 4. Add these two up, we get 441. Okay, so now, same concept, y squared, something squared, something unknown, plus 16, gave us 41. So then it makes sense that 441 minus 16 gives you that unknown. What is 441 minus 16? Well, 441 minus 10 is 431 minus... 6 more is 425. I think, let me double check, 441 minus 10, 431, yes, minus 6 is 425. So y squared is equal to the square root of 425. Now, is that a perfect square? I have no idea, but let's try it out. I'm going to use a calculator on this one. Um, so I'm going to start with something reasonable, 25 times 25. 625, too large. Now I know 20 times 20 is too small. 400, 21 times 21, which we just figured out, 441. Okay, 22 times 22. Nope, 484. Okay. So how about 19 times 19? Let's try to get the range in here. So 19 times 19, 361, too small. Uh, 20 times 20, 400, too small, 21 times 21, too large. So I should have realized this before, sorry it took me so long, but if 20 times 20 is smaller than 425, then the root of 25 is larger than 20. But if 21 squared is larger than 425, which we knew already, which I should have recognized from the start, if 21 squared is 441 and 20 squared is easy, that's just 400, 425 has to be between these two and it's in an irrational root. In other words, it's some decimal root from this whole number. So we can leave it as the square root of 425. All right, hope that helped.